what does what do, what do hot dogs at Disneyland have in common with universal health care? Well, the answer is everything. Zach Sims, Masculine Magic, and we're back. Let's see, uh, same hoodie, same park. <laughs> Lex, it's a different day though. All right, so on this episode, what does, what do, what do hot dogs at Disneyland have in common with universal healthcare? Well, the answer is everything. On this episode, Ooh, I'm squinting in the sunlight. All right, so this is the reason why I am not a fan of universal health care. People are going to hashtag, people can get all upset and all mad. All right, so we've got to look at some of the numbers when it comes to this. This is kind of an economic situation, not just a feel good, everybody should get access type situation. The last estimate that I read, I believe it was 2018. So it can mean up or down a few hundred thousand, but $3.2 trillion annually for America to have universal health care backed by the government. So the question is, where do we get that money? And we're going to go over the main two, you know, ways that liberal Lauren and basic Bethany all want to get mad at. Let's talk about the billionaires. Let's get the money from the 1%. Okay. Well, there's about 500 billionaires. So if we literally took a billion dollars from them annually, okay, well, that's 500 billion towards the, towards the 3.2 trillion. That's a good start. Fair enough. So we got 500 billion in our pocket. Then a lot of people say, well, our military's too big. Let's shrink the military. Okay. Okay, we'll do it. I'll give it to you. We'll shrink our military. We'll shrink our military down to a sailboat. Lex. Our last estimate of the military budget, and I want to say it was 2016 that I found the numbers, was $520 billion. So let me get out of the sunlight. So we'll go ahead and... All right, another $500 billion. Fair enough. That is $1 trillion out of the $3.2 trillion estimate. Where are we getting the rest of the money from? We're out of options. We done took it from the 1% and Robin Hood that shit. And we've also shrunk our military down to a sailboat and one cannon. There's no money in the budget. But Zach, it works in Switzerland. It works in Denmark. They have the population of Delaware. Okay. Rules work for a different population size. And the idea is that, well, they're also all culturally homogenous. They're all middle class white people in those kind of Swedish and Nordic countries. And they pay taxes out the ass. 60% taxes. Lexi, come here. So I'm not a fan, let's switch hands again. I'm not a fan of universal health care, almost from a fiscal perspective. But what's the solution? Because it should be cheaper. So I'm not just gonna present you a problem on this channel, I'm gonna also present the solution. That is, quite obviously, get the insurance companies out of bed with the hospitals and doctors. Lex, follow me, come on. So what I mean by that is, and we're going to have to pause this for one quick second. Part two coming up. Okay, so we're back. Part two. We've got to get the insurance companies out of bed with the hospital organizations. Because what insurance does is it changes the price that people are willing to pay for something. So if we go ahead and say that a broken leg with insurance costs $10,000... Yeah, I agree. It should be a little bit cheaper. It should be a little bit more affordable. But the idea is that we're only willing to pay 10000 because insurance companies are covering that nut for us. So if you didn't have insurance, well, markets tend to regulate themselves. 
in the same sense that Pepsi can't be $5 if Coke costs a nickel. And that's what I mean by what does health insurance have anything to do with hot dogs in Disneyland? Okay, how much is a pack of hot dogs at a, at a Publix or at a supermarket? Five bucks for 12? How much is it at Disneyland? $10 for one? Because people are willing to pay that. No one's gonna leave Disneyland to go get a hot dog lunch. 10 bucks, okay, fuck it. My kid's gonna eat and we're getting back on the rides. Markets tend to regulate themselves and that's why a lot of these issues that are political and hashtag and get all mad, we need to bring the facts and figures back into the whole discussion. Because a lot of these things can be solved with fucking mathematics. Basic econ. Buy low, sell high. Basic stuff. We're not even getting too deep into it. I'm not an economist. All right. So well, I'm liking the sun here. Sunset here at the park. So kind of the takeaway from this is I'm not a fan of universal health care. Lexi, because we can't afford it, you guys, but I do think it should be cheaper. The idea that a saline drip costs $700 in the ER when it's legit salt water, okay, with a little bit of probiotics or whatever the fuck we're putting in ourselves these days, no one's willing to pay for that unless the insurance companies are involved. A broken leg will not cost $10,000 if we basically got rid of insurance on a certain level. It couldn't. No one would pay for it. The entire market would be like, oh, damn, we're only getting $1,200 for these broken legs. I guess that's what we're going to have to charge. Because again, Coke can't cost $5 if Pepsi is a nickel. Capitalism actually works. And I know people don't really want to hear that. And this is not exactly a political channel, but I wanted to kind of bring that out as again, another example about how I tend to, or how I want to add kind of the masculine brain back into these discussions. It can't all just be, oh, we all deserve to live, free healthcare, free healthcare. I mean, yeah, if the world was lollipops and rainbows. But I find it odd because we're gonna get on the spiritual thing for a quick second is that, I don't know, the majority of leftists and liberals tend to lean atheist, which I find odd. That's a really odd correlation of worldviews. But the backbone of the atheistic approach to life is it's a construct, you know, um, evolution, survival of the fittest, which is the backbone of evolution. Nature makes us stronger if we allow it to. So in the sense that if your entire worldview is survival of the fittest, essentially, but you want everyone to stay alive. I'm not saying let's let's kill all the Down syndrome children. God, don't take me out of context. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that they're kind of incongruent with their views, politics, and their kind of spiritualistic, atheistic worldview. They don't really actually jive together, which is kind of an odd but yet obvious assumption. That's not even an assumption. It's an objective truth. We could just do any sort of Gallup poll and find out, you know, the majority of leftists tend to be atheists, which is just, just odd in general. Maybe that's just a side fact. Maybe that doesn't even belong in this episode, but it's interesting to me. And then you got all the Republicans that just happen to be fundamentalist Christians, and I'm not going to say they're much better, but at least they don't think the world's an accident, because that's just, ugh, a big, and, and then we're all here with flamingos and fucking penguins? And I got my dog here in a beautiful park and it all came from an, an explosion of nothing. What? Doesn't make too much sense. Okay, so the summary and the recap. Look at my camera work here. Need to get me one of those GoPros. We cannot afford universal health care. Even if we took 500 billion from the rich and we took 500 billion from the military budget, that's roughly one third of the way there. It works in the Nordic countries because, well, they have the population of Kansas, 8 million people, and they all pay out the ass, and they all agree. We're a melting pot of cultures and legal systems. It's, it, rules work differently in America, and to suggest they don't, when being a melting pot is one of the things that make America great, we can't operate under the same laws as other countries that are all white people. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, we just can't. They have the same religion, they have the same worldview, they have the same economic standpoints, the same political party. Yeah, man, they can run a little bit differently. And that's essentially the 
40th monkey experiment. They say that in a, in a troop of monkeys, anything larger than 40 tends to be slightly harder to control. We have 320 million people in our country. It's a fuck ton. And I'm not saying I understand communism, but China has a billion. And at that point, you pretty much got to be communist. You got a billion people to watch out for. Ugh. Ugh. Pepsi can't be five bucks if Coke costs a nickel. And that one fact of economics and capitalism will solve so many of the political ideals that we're struggling with now. Get the insurance companies out. Zach Sims. Hate me if you want, but bro, I make fucking sense. Lex, masculine magic.